What do you think we should know about Pennsylvania, which is, we all agree, a key to this election? Sure. Well, I, I, you know, a couple of reactions, David. First is this is going to be a nose-to-nose horse race right up until 8 p.m. on election night just two weeks from now. And, you know, likely uh, the, the prospect of not knowing who's the out-and-out -out victor that evening could be the, the case. But, you know, what, what I see are the dynamics for this horse race. You've got uh, certainly uh, an attractive uh, Democratic nominee in Joe Biden who, you know, talks about his roots, and it, particularly in northeastern Pennsylvania, the town of Scranton. Uh, Donald Trump, who really came from behind in 2016, much like you've got dynamically in 2020. So it, it's going to be nose to nose. I saw an interesting fact to it the other day, David, uh, that kind of runs against the idea that, uh, and no question, mathematically, that the, the uh, write in ballots on the Democratic side are kind of outgunning the Republican side as much as seven to two. So something to watch. I bet the other dynamic to watch is, you know, the, these younger. Uh, as they say, non-college educated white male voters uh, from these rural addresses, from these rural areas. And those registration numbers are off the charts in favor of the Republicans. So it might balance each other. We shall see. Well, it's interesting you say that, Governor, because we heard something similar actually in Florida, where the registrations for Republicans are really up in, in the state. You talk about the non-college educated white males. Is this a battle between Philadelphia on the one hand and the west of the state on the other? Well, I don't think it can reduce it, it, it to simple geographic contrast points, David. I, you know, no, I don't think any of us doubt the idea that among uh, suburban women, there's a there's a, a great deal of concern and indifference toward the president's reelection, but also across the Commonwealth among Democratic women in some of these rural states. Remember, there was one political consultant who referred to Pennsylvania, at least in the rural areas, as Pennsylvania in a play on words of Pennsylvania and Kentucky. Uh, and so I, I'm not convinced that those Democratic women uh, are enamored with a, a Biden candidacy as well. So in my mind, I think it all points to this horse race metaphor that I shared just a couple of minutes ago. That, I mean, we've got 14 days to go on this Tuesday that we talk, and I, you know, it's, it's highly competitive. So I don't think it's, it's just ge geography. You know, if I go, you know, uh, certainly, you know, my wife and I are here and raised our kids here in Pennsylvania as well and still plugged in. And, you know, when I see a thousand vehicles uh, traveling, uh, trucks and small trucks and regular family SUVs and cars out there honking the horns for Donald Trump, and then you see big numbers, not as big numbers turn out for Joe Biden, it, it really creates a sense of uh, not just contrast, but wonderment about who's going to show up in two weeks on Election Day. I think, as it always is, uh, you know, turnout will be key. So, so, Governor, you have run for elective office, and therefore you know to be skeptical of polls. You have to be very careful because the polls can really mislead you. Give us a sense of Pennsylvania polls right now, because it's quite close, although apparently uh, the former Vice President Biden appears to be ahead. Could the polls be fooling sure. us in Pennsylvania? I, I, I think that dynamic is there. I mean, look, we're all tuned in in 2020 and wired in. We've got our iPhones and, the you know, the... You know, you have to wonder, are these polling models, uh, despite, the, you know, their exertions on the part of these firms, that they are reaching out to uh, mobile phone users? You know, we don't know. Can't, can't be sure. But, but as, as I see it, uh, you know, the, the, this, uh, you know, we often talk about there's not one poll nationally. There's really 50 state polls. In a play on numbers, David, I would say that in Pennsylvania, there's 67 polls based on the 67 counties. Hmm. You know, if this were only to the suburban or rural areas, I think Donald Trump runs away with it. Uh, but when you throw in the urban areas, you know, the big, uh, the big urban environments of Pittsburgh in the West, uh, and, and by the way, people often say that the Midwest starts just west of Pittsburgh, to give you a feel for, to give your viewers a feel for the attitudes and the values that pervade those counties. But Pittsburgh in the West and Philadelphia in the East uh, that, you know, y you see that, that geographic battle that you, you brought up a couple of moments ago. But l let me throw in another dynamic, which I think kind of uh, historically correlates to what we, we saw in 2016 when Donald Trump came from behind, seemingly in the last 10 days, to overtake Hillary Clinton, who was, a, 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 in a singular way, a, a qualified candidate for president. Uh, and, they, you know, they, it, it's, it's, a, it's a comparison to what went on in the U.K., uh, in the 90s when uh, Margaret Thatcher was the PM. Over there, they call it the, the, uh, the Tory effect. 
the shy Tory effect, as in the Tory party. Now, we all know that she was on the right, Tories liked her, uh, and you had many folks on the left uh, who really would not express openly and publicly that they favored Maggie Thatcher, and they would not answer forthrightly in polls, and yet she won again and again and again. And they, they, were, they were shy, they were not willing to express how they felt about Maggie Thatcher, thus the reference to the shy Tory effect. Right. Well, if there's anything to that in 2020, and after what we saw in 2016, right. what's to stop any uh, I individual from suggesting that Donald Trump has the, 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 the makings of coming from behind again in Pennsylvania? And finally, Governor, I'm going to do what we do, ask an unfair question, because it's a long question, now, don't have much time, but basically you've done a lot with business since you left being Lieutenant Governor and Governor of Pennsylvania. You've done a lot with business. Which of the two candidates, Joe Biden or Donald Trump, is going to be better for business? Well, I, I think the needle points to Donald Trump. Uh, uh, th after all, aside from, well, let's 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 be sober about this and, and step away from our feelings about his style and approach. Uh, economically, we were rolling right up until March one, and I think if the election were held March second, Donald Trump, at least in Pennsylvania, and I would think nationally, would have been a very strong contender for re-election. So I, I think his acuity. I think his sentimental take on what it takes to help Main Street or the big Fortune 100 uh, companies is, is strong. I think Joe Biden certainly, you know, that he uh, worked very closely uh, with uh, President Obama, certainly was a big supporter of, of President Clinton at the time as a member of the U.S. Senate representing Delaware. And really, he's got strong credentials as well. But I think at the end of the day, you know, whether it's the chambers of Congress or uh, 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 of uh, commerce to, you know, business advocacy groups. I think there's a decided right. comfort with Donald Trump's take on public policy when it relates to supporting business, small and large. Okay.